If you're watching this video, it's probably because you're about to start army training or at least starting the preparation for it. What I wanna do in this video is outline my key points for getting fit to join the army and prepare physically for basic training. Before we go any further, there's a couple of points I want to clarify. One, no, I'm not a PTI, a physical training instructor, and I'm not a fitness coach. There are a few great accounts online on Instagram that you can follow, uh, and they give some really good advice. However, I have been an infantry officer for just shy of six years. I've gone through officer training at Sandhurst. I've done the platoon commander's battle course at Brecon. I've been a platoon commander at Battalion and I've been a platoon commander instructor at the Infantry Training Centre in Catterick. So I have a relatively good idea about what army training entails and how you should physically prepare for it. The next thing I want to clarify is the reason I'm doing this video is because it is the most frequently asked question I get online. For example, Hi, I was just wondering if you could give me some tips on how to improve my 2K. Or, what tips or exercise would you advise for stepping up my army training? Or, I'm trying to lose weight, what's the quickest method to do it? Or, I've got my army assessment centre, can you give any tips on the physical side of life? Or, could you give me some advice on how to get fitter? Okay, so I hope you get the idea, there's a lot of questions coming in. I've also just put into YouTube how to get army fit. And whilst there's some really good videos on there uh, and some good advice, there's also a lot of dross on there as well, as you'd expect with the internet. So hopefully this video doesn't fall into that category. You can actually take something away from it. Okay, so how to prepare physically for joining the army, for basic training, for the physical challenges that you're gonna face and how to pass the tests to actually get into the army. So if you follow me for a while, then you'll know that I enjoy my fizz. Um, I enjoy going to the gym, I run. And in the infantry, we also do a lot of running. In the army, you do a lot of running with weight, but in the infantry especially, you do a lot of running with weight as well. If you're preparing for the army, I would my first bit of advice would be to stop running with weight. If you're a mega fit person and you're happy and comfortable running with weight, then cool. I would say the vast majority of you um, that are maybe watching this video aren't yet at the stage where you should be running with weight. What do I mean by that? Well, generally speaking, in my experience, in my career, the people that I've come across that are the best runners usually make the best tabbers. Not always because of, of your size, your weight, your strength, and all that sort of stuff. But usually, if you're a good runner, then you're probably going to be a good um, tabber as well. To get fit for the army, you don't need to be able to run long distances with weight. That's what training can do for you. Training will build you up. But I would advise to be a decent runner before you get there. So now we've got that bit out of the way, here's the two main areas I think you should focus on. Strength training and running. Let's start with strength training. Okay, why? Well, overall, being stronger is not only gonna help you pass arduous challenges, courses, events, tests that, are gonna, uh, that you're inevitably gonna encounter in the army. It's gonna prepare your body physically for coping better when under duress um, and coping better when dealing with weight, casualty drags, whatever it is, being stronger is going to enable your body to handle that a lot better. The second point on, on strength training is that it's going to reduce your risk of injury. Okay, if you're stronger and you can cope with things better, you're less likely to get injured. It's not obviously saying that that won't happen, but it just reduces the likelihood. So let's delve a little bit deeper into strength training. If you don't have access to a gym, then you can do body weight movements, push-ups, pull-ups, squats, sit-ups, that sort of thing. You'll do a lot of circuit training uh, in the army as well. So developing that before you start is a really good starting point. But let's move on to strength training. Okay, with this, you definitely wanna be doing your compound moves. By that, I mean bench press, deadlifts, squats, military press, all that sort of stuff that use, that's not necessarily an isolated movement. I used to fall into the category, and I know a load of people that used to as well, is because we were running a lot, we used to basically skip leg day, all right? And the reason for that is because you didn't want tired legs if you've got a run or a tab coming up. And that's understandable, but it's also an excuse. You can yet do the bodybuilding sort of stuff, to be fair, any strength training is better than nothing, but definitely your compound moves should be the focus of your 
sessions and I think they should probably be done at the start whilst you're fresher so a good warm up um, and then into your compound lifts. Another question I get is how many sets and how many reps should you be doing? Well I would advise to mix it up. One it makes it more interesting and two if you're changing your training and mixing it up then it sort of shocks the body and forces it to change, forces it to do it to adapt and forces it to grow. So I, for example, what I'm doing for the last two weeks is four sets of eight reps on those compound movements. Once the two weeks is finished, I'll then go into five sets of five. Once those two weeks is finished, I'll then really up the numbers in trying to go with three sets of three, okay, so purely on strength point. I'll then have a deload week, and then I'll go back to four sets of eight, five of five, three of three. And that's how I'm gonna rotate um, and that's how I'm going to do the first part of this year and see where we get. The idea is that once I finish the rotation, so you've gone to your deload week, when you go down to your four sets of eight, you should obviously be able to lift a little bit more weight. Again, that's just my training. You don't have to take that on board. The more you look into it, the more complicated it, it can get. But in its simplest form, going to the gym and lifting some weights is going to make you stronger. Fact. The next part of this, running. Without doubt, obviously a really important part of the job. Now again, I'm not a running coach. There's a few different methods out there. The 80-20 rule, 80% of your run should be easy, 20% should be hard, heart rate zone training. Okay, there's different ways around it. In its simplest form, getting out there and running more often is going to get you fitter. However, what you don't want to do is go out and just run the same thing. The most common mistake I see when people message me about running is that they just go for the same distance every single time. Not only must that be incredibly boring, just running a 2K best effort all the time or going out for a 5K run all the time, but you're really not mixing it up enough to get the most out of your runs. It's sort of a wasted effort. I think you should be running a minimum of three times a week but I do think you should absolutely mix up the distances and mix up the effort that you're putting into each run. What's helped me over the years get better at running is slowing my pace down and going for longer runs. That's gonna really build up your endurance. And then when it comes to your harder sessions, that's where you can really focus on the speed. So for example, one way you could cut it if it's three runs a week, one run, nice and steady, a comfortable pace. It doesn't have to be any crazy distance. Let's go with three miles. Your next session in the week could be a hard session. And that's where you wanna be doing some hill sprints, some interval training, going down the track, whatever it is. But that's where you're really putting max effort in for a period of time. It could be a 2K best effort, a 5K best effort, whatever you want it to be, but that's gonna be your hard run. And then the third run of the week could be a slower paced one than, all, than the other two, but just for a longer distance, okay, to really start building up the mileage and get better. When I was at uh, the infantry training center, I saw recruits come through and in my interview with them, I'd be like, how have you prepared? And they say, I've tried hard to get my 2K time down and I've been practicing the 2K a lot. Okay, fine, you've put in some effort, but on the first run that we go over two kilometers, you're probably gonna struggle because your body's just not used to running uh, a longer distance. So build it up. Whatever a, a normal run is for you, say it's two kilometers, make your long run five kilometers, and then slowly build it up over time. Don't just stick with those numbers. Do two to three weeks on that program and then switch it up again. So we've touched on body weight training, we've touched on strength training, and we've touched on running. There's another question that I get asked a lot, which is weight loss and how to get fit. Okay, my advice is I wouldn't pay too much attention to the scales at the start. There are two different parts of that question. I would urge you to focus on the getting fit part and weight loss will come with it. Just because you're losing weight doesn't necessarily mean you're getting fitter. But if you're getting fitter and you've got the weight to lose, then that means you're probably going to be losing weight. So yes, you need to take things like diet into account, but also just eating bloody salads for the next few months isn't going to do your workouts very well. You're not fueling your body to handle with what you're gonna do, especially if you're going from someone that doesn't train a lot to someone that does train a lot. And if you've got a lot of weight to lose, you're probably in the former category at the moment. I wouldn't necessarily suggest fasted cardio unless you've done more research into it and that's an avenue that you wanna go down. But I would suggest fueling your workouts correctly and, get, and focusing on the getting fit part of it more so. If you're getting stronger, getting faster, being able to run further and everything's feeling a lot better and you're getting fitter, then the weight loss is gonna come as part of that. If you're someone in the other category that wants to gain weight, then you need to start eating more. Add a fourth meal into the in the day, consider protein shakes, that sort of stuff. Something that's gonna be able to get more calories on board, but you've also got to be doing your strength training with it. So there's my advice to physically prepare for joining the army, to cope with the stresses of basic training and your career throughout. I'll wrap it up by saying, be consistent. 
come up with a plan and stick to it. So if you're strength training three to five times a week and running three times a week, you are going to see progress. You are going to see results. You've just got to be consistent with it and be patient, okay? If you've got any more questions, feel free to put them in the comments or you can head over to Instagram. I upload every day. I also reply to DMs on there as well. So it's at DJRXP, go and give me a follow. If this video has helped you, please give it a like. Click subscribe if you haven't, it hugely helps me out and click the bell and you can be notified every time I upload a video. Make sure you follow the 2022 training series on my channel that will document my training throughout the year as I prepare for different events and you can just track my progress and you should be able to tailor some of the training for you guys and it should help with what you do because it's all strength and running based. That's it for this week's video. I will see you next week with a brand new video in a bit.